Yes, Vicky. Yes, Vicky, happy smiley face. Is that thing on? Yes. <laughs> One of these days. <laughs> One of these days, Jim. Where are we? Eh? <laughs> We're at Oberon. We've set up at Oberon Showgrounds a couple of nights. Maybe three. Maybe four, maybe a week. Anyway, we're doing um, Janolan Caves. Just been booked our tickets for one tour tomorrow and we'll see what looks good when we're out there. And our friends Andrew and Jody have joined us again, all the way from Coffs Harbour. Can you believe this? 60 something years I've been waiting to go to Janolan Caves. We finally got tickets and everything. <laughs> We're eight kilometers away and the road's blocked by a fallen tree. As well as this, there's only one road into Janolan Caves and that is only one lane and you have to be escorted up and down. And this can take up to 45 minutes. Somebody's brakes are cooking. <laughs> So we have an escort. Because I waited so long, I get a private escort into Janolan Caves. This is one hell of a road, and I'm not looking forward to the trip up unless we have an escort as well. Yeah, it must be the way out. Look, there's a sign. Yeah. Timbering. So, so that's why there's traffic control up the top. There's been some water through here. So you used to be able to drive through here, but you can't anymore. Because it's a rock fall area. So that's the blue pool through there. But uh, access is all blocked off due to landslides. Holds on tight to the ceiling and points down. Stalic watch. Perfect. Well done. At the bottom, there's only one left. Perfect. Okay, oh, so yeah, stalic so tight, holds on tight to the ceiling. I mean, everyone's we were paying. always told that. The lights run up and the tides fall down. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, got a, I've got a bit of a cheeky explanation if you guys... Oh. Would anybody like a cheeky explanation? Yes, it's it. very inappropriate. Oh, no. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. no. <laughs> um, I had a German lady tell me that in Germany. Um, I'm not sure if that, this is true or not, but she's told me. I shouldn't be saying this. Um, but they remember the Sally type because it's like an old lady's. Oh. Oh. And they point down. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's um, true. Right. <laughs> so I thought that was a bit cheeky. I think it was just her quite frank about that very shortly. 
but uh, again, sorry, 1866 was the first caretaker. That, that was when the first caretaker was appointed to Janolan. And his name was Jeremiah Wilson. So we'll just call him Jeremiah. Um, however, he, here at Janolan, there's so much history that I'm still learning. So he is a huge part of these caves. He's a very um, brilliant man, quite frankly. So he lived in the area um, and then took on the plight of conservation from an older gentleman that inspired him. Wrote to the government and said, please let me take on Janolan. And they said, no worries. So that's, we're, we're only here because of him. Wow. So he built this place from the ground up with his own money. Um, and then obviously the government then started giving him grants because they realised that this was a very special place. However, he was exploring that cave above us, that hole. Okay, so this is also another sinkhole, but above us is technically the elder cave. Okay, these stairs are now part of the plug hole tour. <coughs> so that's the actual caving tour. This is where you come out of. So he was above us at the top here, and that was around the 1870s. He's looked down and he's lost his cap. Now his cap was very important. His wife made that cap, okay, and they were a very cute couple. And he, you know, he that was his lucky hat. That's what it, that got him out of the cave at the end of the day. It was very special and very important to retrieve that cap as a result. So instead of chancing it, you know, oh, should just make me another one. He's actually scrambled down these rocks. So again, with only a candle between his teeth and no stairs, he has scrambled down, and you are standing where he stood right now. So he's come into here, he's explored left and right, and he's <coughs> called it the Imperial Cave, which is quite special. It's obviously not what we're used to seeing online, however, it is crystal. It's been dried out. It's been dried out a lot quicker than the other crystal in the cave, and you can probably feel why. So you can feel that very cold draft yes. coming through. Mm. So, so it's coming from in here at the moment. And so this is actually an exit point for the wind to come out. Mm. So we are the oldest open cave system in the world. So not necessarily the oldest, that's still up for debate. However, with our system, we're like a big sponge. So we're exposed, there's lots of different entrances and exits. So as a you need a pressure on the gym? Yeah. foot high. Beautiful. Okay, so we are now going to head to the underground river, which is obviously a very important part of this tour. So if you'd like to continue down as far as you would to an underground river. Believe it or not, that is water. It's a very good question. I'm going to answer that uh, with about 430 million years of energy for you in five minutes very shortly. <laughs> very good question. Was that dug? Well, that's natural. That, ah, that we uh, just it came was opened down? up. So it was. All right. Did you touch the water? No. Yeah. Get tripped on over there. Hmm? Get tripped on over there. Yeah, you got tripped on down there. Oh, yeah. It's amazing, isn't yeah. it? It's taking the car over there. Okay, welcome to the underground resort. So, I'm going to attempt to answer any of your questions in my mind on the steel, uh, and we can go from there. 430 million years ago, all of the east coast of Australia was under a warm, shallow sea. This is long before dinosaurs for even a thing. During that time, there was lots of sea life, obviously shallow, warm, 
perfect. Okay, so lots of shellfish, lots of coral specifically. They would end their life cycle over millions of years. who haven't, would you like to experience cave darkness today? Yes. Beautiful. So I'm going to turn off light before I do. Cover up any screens. whether this crystal is dormant or if it's growing. So if it's dormant, remember how crystals you know, can absorb light, things like that. So a dry crystal has six sides to it and that's actually reflecting the light back at us and that's why it looks so sparkly. Mm -hmm. However, with crystal, if it's wet and, there's, uh, and it's growing, it, it's obviously soft. There are no hard edges. And so that's why it looks like candle wax. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that looks like a wolf. How? 
They usually say it's elephant, but you're actually thinking of the phone. Oh, I've seen elephant too. Yeah. 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 is obviously very lovely and very professional so let's go with that one um, this is a cave junction so this actually leads to different caves however if you have a really close look when you come up to this section here you'll notice that you have to walk through crystal to get to the next section and we've decided it's just not worth it nice. so we have now sealed this off uh, get damaged yeah. well John Olin has a history of vandalism so we're going to talk about Doesn't. Keep it as stays. Short. Is this where she wants to go? No, I think she wants us to wait there, maybe. I don't know. I'll go down and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was age shivering in my mom's eye. Okay, so <laughs> over here we've got lots of close stones, okay? Now with this flow stone, you'll notice that it's, um, it looks like two minute noodles, let's be real. Or if you're like me, it looks like you're having you bleach it too much. So, thank you. So, um, water will come through here, it'll sit on top of the flow stone. And what happens here, a little bit, which I think is quite special. So, um, they, they believe that it's kind of reminiscent of that. So when it floods, does it do does it do any destruction to the crystal? No, if anything, it's good for us. Yeah. So if the flood's coming through with force, obviously yes, that would cause destruction. Yeah. In saying that though, for force to be coming through and destroying this crystal, we would be <laughs> We've decided to do a second cave tour, but we can't do that till two fifteen, I think. So we've got a couple of hours to fill in, so we're going for a walk. This is called the six foot track. I don't know why. The uh, next cave tour has got over a thousand steps. That's stairs. So we've got to loosen up. Engine house. Hmm. Halfway up.
Holy bloody hell. I mean, goodness gracious. Look at the big hole in the rock. You can see the road. Yeah, the road down there. Would that be the blue point? Maybe it was the other track that had the... Oh, there's the blue pool. Just coming into view. That looks like a great arch. This is the Carlotta Arch. And there's the blue pool. Oh, that's wonderful. Look at that. That's what they are. That's what the one in that game is. It's so gorgeous. All the little caves oh, in this wall. Oh, when you look through the camera. Look at that. No, I don't think so. I think so. Oh, wow, so we've climbed down these stairs. From up there. That's all blocked off now, but the stairs continue through this cave. come out at the bottom down there. And there's the blue pool. There's the underside of the arch. Bloody, bloody amazing. Must be blocked. Too dangerous for our lifetime, I guess. So this is a six-foot track. Don't know why it's called that. A bit rough. Oh, that's all guys going on further.